I am so excited for this review because I can finally start one of these and just be like, I loved this book. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So if you've been watching any of the videos that I have done with other people recently, I had a video that I did with Kieran that was a prediction video for what would be on the short list. I had a video that I did with both Kieran and Zim from Zim Reads about what everybody else thought would be on the short list. And actually by this point, there's probably a video out on my reaction of the short list because I'm quite sure that this video will be coming out after that's announced because that's like two days away and I've got another review between now and then. Anyway, none of that's important. Basically, if you've seen me talk about this book at all since I've read it, you probably already know my feelings on it. I loved it. I was waiting for this moment, like to have, I feel like I get it once a booker. <laughs> Last year I got it with Burnt Sugar, uh, International Booker, I got it with That Night All Blood Is Black. And this booker I have finally gotten there with the seventh book that I read from the list, which is Light Perpetual by Francis Bufford. In fact, I like this book so much that the other book that, or the other novel I should say, that Spufford has written is currently on its way to me, which I'm very excited about. Um, this book had all the makings of a book that I would not like. <laughs> And that's why I love Booker. That's why I enjoy like following an award and like reading through the whole long list because it makes me read books that I wouldn't have otherwise picked up. And many times I find that one of those books is a book that I really love. And this one is so not something I would have picked up. So this book takes place in 1944 or starts, I should say in 1944 and uh, in a shopping center a bomb goes off and ends up killing a lot of people including uh, five children and this book takes a perspective of what if that didn't happen and while this is based off of an actual event all of the people and everything are completely made up it th sets the bombing in a different location um, in order to not be like speculating on real people that actually existed because obviously there's no way of knowing what kinds of lives they would have lived. And it would have been like a little insensitive to the families to be writing about that. So it follows these five children um, through what their lives might have been uh, or I guess would have been if the bomb hadn't ended up killing them. And why I say this book has the makings of a book that I wouldn't like is, uh, first of all, I don't really like historical fiction. I'm not typically a big fan of that. Um, and I also don't typically like books that are from many different perspectives where there'll be like sections that are specific to a certain person, particularly if they take place over a long stretch of time. It's just not something that I generally go for. That's not to say that there aren't books that are the exception to that, I mean, clearly, um, but it, I feel like those books, it's a little bit harder for them to, to get me, you know what I mean? <laughs> to, to get, you know, my enthusiasm for them, but this book got it. So, and a note on the overall story. Uh, a lot of people did not like this book. And I think that a lot of criticism comes from like, why, why are we following like these five children through their lives? Like they're barely interconnected. And you know, there's like this expectation that if you're writing about five characters, that their lives are going to be, you know, connected. And like you read the first time where you see like all the children together and many of them go to the same school or in the same class. And you're like, ooh, I wonder if like one of them will marry another one or something like that. But like, that's not what this story is. It's not trying to give you this like cute novel version of what could have happened in these people's lives. It's supposed to give you this realistic version because I think this book asks a much more important question and it doesn't do it in an easy way where it says, do these lives matter? And then you see like one of the characters goes on to like solve world hunger or something, but Instead, it's do these lives matter? And these are just basic normal lives filled with ups and downs and goods and bads. But we as a, as a species, as a society, should be able to agree that 
you know, these lives are worth living, right? Like no five-year-old child deserves to die, even if they don't go on to live like this grand life or anything. So I very much appreciated that this book didn't take this easy, cutesy way out that I think some people went into it expecting, and even I, to a certain extent, expected. Like, I remember reading the beginning and thinking like, oh, I wonder which of them will like continue to be friends later in life. And while I'm not gonna spoil any events of their lives, um, I do think that that expectation, I mean, I've already kind of spoiled that you shouldn't go into it with that expectation, but I'm not gonna talk about like any of the individual things that like happen to um, these people, particularly later in their lives. Uh, and I'll try to, I'll keep those, those at a minimum so that you can discover the kinds of people that they are throughout their lives. And I won't even say the kinds of people that they turn into or they grow up to be, because I don't think that that's, that's really <laughs> like the point. It's that they're always changing. Like Bo Burnham has said in several interviews about his movie Eighth Grade, everybody's coming of age all the time. Or uh, Michelle Obama in her book Becoming, she talks about how we're all becoming all the time. We, we're never there, you know, it's always a growing process. And I think that this book really points that out. Like there's no point in anybody's life where it's just like, this is who they are now <laughs> you know it's it's not like you just stop changing as a person at any one point and this book really shows that that the the growth and i struggle to even call it growth because i don't think it always is but it's just the gradual shift of who you are as a person um and these people shift throughout their lives and they're different kinds of people at different points in their lives but does any one of those moments mean that their time is not worth living you know so let's get into some themes i'm going to start with um the at the beginning at the very first theme that the book brings up which is the idea of infinity versus finality uh this book i love the start of this book so much so this book starts right off with uh the bomb there's a few pages where it talks about what would happen or did happen, although we know that this is like a fictionalized version of what actually happened uh, in a different borough in London. Um, but it talks about the bomb and how it's able to, you know, bring such finality to these people and specifically these kids' lives. But it's kind of crazy that like in that very small amount of time, in such a small amount of time that it, there's not time to process it. All of these things happen like very, very slowly, really, when when you, you know, dig down into the exact milliseconds and then even smaller than that. And it talks about how in such a short amount of time, there's really an infinity of tiny little moments because you can always divide like smaller and smaller. I really love those couple of pages, but I will say that if that's not your speed and you read the first couple of pages, don't worry about it. The rest of the book like, you know, is not going to be like that, but it does a really beautiful job of just talking about this moment of just absolute destruction and how in this infinity of collections of like little moments something so final happens as the death of these people that were there um and then it takes it all back and it's like all right what would happen if if the bomb didn't go off and then it gets started like it, it kicks off into the story and i loved that <laughs> now specifically the reason why i love that so much as the start of a book and why i think it's so fascinating and so different is that it right up front tells you what the point of this story is the question that it's asking and it allows you the reader to ask it at any point throughout the entire book because you already know you know what this is about it's not like at the end you get to this point where you know boom it asks you a question <laughs> boom <laughs> it asks you a question um like are, were these lives worth living 
and you have to think like oh wait like let me look back at every moment through the book and think about it in this whole new way which I do think is very fun and there are a lot of books that I like that do that at the end however I really loved that this book gave me the chance to ask that question the entire time and it gives a whole different look on these lives sometimes these very mundane lives and sometimes these lives that where people made choices that I do not at all agree with uh, at, at every moment at every turn I was able to think critically in terms of what the theme is as a whole because I knew it from page one and I think that that's just a really really it provides this totally different reading experience that I just like gobbled up and loved and then next I want to talk about the storytelling in general um, this the way that these lives are told so we're following from five perspectives it's let's see if I can remember them uh, Joe Val was it Val I think uh, Joe Val Vern Alec Ben I want to say okay let's see how well I did I did I did get it right okay it was Val those are our five characters those are the five kids that were supposed to have died in this bomb but didn't uh, because the bomb never went off so it's not like some crazy event happened in their lives that links them together it didn't they all just happened to be at the same place at the same time and then they left that place and they went on to live out their lives now I think my favorite character would probably be Joe. Uh, I loved her sections so much and I think it was more just because I she was probably one of the most likable characters um, which led to me <laughs> really liking her but also she has this passion for music and this almost ability with music where when she hears it and when she sings it she like sees color and so like different songs will have like different colors to her or even like different moments of songs and so she feels like this very strong and almost visual connection with music and it ends up being a very large part of her life and at one point she uh, is teaching music and she talks about how she has like a hard time doing this at first because music to her is just like this thing that she knows and she feels and she gets it but how do you explain like how do you teach that you can't just like teach a feeling you know you have to break it down into these smaller portions that she can serve up individually and go over individually until they create a grander picture in the minds of those she's teaching and I really loved the passage where she's talking about this and considering this because it feels so much like what this story is as a whole this idea that we, we follow five lives in you know not a super long book um, but from essentially start to finish and that's a lot that's a lot that happens a lot happens in a life far more than can be fit in a book and when you're using five different lives then how do you do that how do you break up a life into just little portions that you can you know slowly learn and get the picture of what the grander life was as a whole and I think that this story does a good job at that you know you only get to see little pockets of these people's lives you get to see one day every however many years of each of their lives and yet it forms this greater picture for you of what of who they are even though there's so much time that you don't see you get this fuller image and it's crazy how different they can be from one portion to the next so you get the sense of all of the transformation that had to take place between those times and I said this in uh, one of the videos that I filmed with Kira and I think it was our shortlist prediction video but it was it's so clear reading this book that Spufford had an idea of everything that happened in each of these characters lives so much so that I'd be willing to bet he could have written a book about each one of them and yet 
we just get like little bite-sized pieces but you you just know that these characters are fully well-rounded like all of them is known to the author and you just get the parts that are not necessarily important but that provide uh, little fragments that give you a good greater picture of their lives and I just I think that he did such a great job with that also just seeing these characters from the time that they were young and then seeing them when they're older and uh, looking at other characters who are young whether they be characters that are actually in the story and are like related to them or characters that are you know removed from them but but just young people that they see seeing their ideas form about them and then you know like another generation up them being able to see kids that would be you know them being able to see like grandchildren and having even different views of that it's really beautiful to see like all the different perspectives just on youth as a whole um, and joe of course <laughs> there's a lot of quotes specifically from joe's sections that i really loved um, but one of the quotes she had was, in almost no time at all, possibility will be swapped for actuality. So she's looking at these kids and seeing that like their lives are so filled with possibility and different outcomes and opportunity. But as they live their lives, like slowly those possibilities, you know, lessen and they turn into actuality, what actually happened. And I thought that that was a very interesting way to look at it, but also it's interesting in the fact that um, Joe in this moment is still like relatively young. Like she still has a lot of life left to live and she's already seeing these other, these children and thinking like, you know, oh, like don't squander your time when she could think the same for herself you know she could also think that well i've also got a lot of possibilities in front of me compared to somebody that would be like of the next generation like she still has possibilities out in front of her and yes she has a lot of actualities behind her but that doesn't mean that you know she should be taking for granted what she's got ahead and obviously like as she grows more she comes more to terms with even that fact and um you know being older and seeing people that are the age that she was when she first made that or first had that quote first had that thought and seeing like those people as having a lot of possibilities left in their life i just really loved that i don't know that sentiment but that quote in general and just like taking this time that we have and being as grateful as we can be for it and then another a great kind of passage or area that i really liked that i think kind of ties into this like storytelling you know many many perspectives many lives lived area of this video is uh, a an observation that alec makes um towards the end which is not a spoiler or anything it's just a thought that he has alec has one of those moments where you see that the crowd is composed of is nothing but individual after individual after individual the city granulates He's seeing the leaves, not the foliage, the trees, not the forest, the spill of separate crystals, not the bag of sugar. A circle line train, not his, slides into the platform and through its open doors and lighted windows, he sees his fellow citizens displayed as if in a gallery. And he kind of looks at the people that are on the train and sees their different lives for what he can see in that one moment. And it's kind of the way that the you as the reader reads the book where you're almost like looking at this gallery of moments in you know five people's lives and knowing that there's so much story in them and you get to see a lot of it but there's still so much that you don't get to see and having that forever having that question of were these lives worth living is just ugh, it's so good like this book does such a good job of of being what it is. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. And then uh, to kind of take us into our last section, which is the characters specifically. Each of these characters lives like very different lives and have very different problems. And I thought about discussing each of them more in depth. Um, I've kind of told a little bit about what happens to Joe, but even that, there's so much more to her life than just like the time that she was a music teacher 
Uh, and really, a lot of the characters are like that. They, they all have different motivations, but they all um, have their own ups and downs because of those motivations. And I think that there's this large sense of uh, hope at the beginning, uh, you kind of see... So the first time you see them is five years after the bomb would have hit. And you see uh, Vern, um, one, of the, one of the kids, and he's kind of like, he seems school bully-ish. Um, he seems like kind of annoying and a, and a bit of a brat, but you see him and you think, wow, he's about to live like a whole life. And you still have this like weird sense of hope because he's just a kid and he could turn into anybody really. Um, but you watch his life and the decisions that he makes and like he does have a very clear motivation the whole time. Like you totally understand what motivates him in life but it is kind of infuriating like the whole time uh he's a very reliable character i'll say that he always does basically out of all of them i think he always i was like yes i get it this is who you are as a person whereas the other characters i think were more likely to bounce around from from one thing to another maybe joe would be the next closest where she always had like some form of music in her life and then the other characters uh alec i think probably most is representative of just wanting like i don't want to say the american dream and this doesn't take place in america but uh it kind of along those lines like he just wants a regular life with you know a family good job along those lines uh, but even him you see him get kind of bounced around by life and rattled back and forth and then i think val and ben maybe um, change the most throughout the story and i don't necessarily mean from point a to point b but i mean like point a b c d e f it's you know they're always changing it's constant change it's not like i said at the beginning of this video it's not like becoming a certain type of person it's all the types of people that they were throughout their lives. I think Ben and Val have the most change into different types of people throughout. But the funny thing is that I think all of them at one point or another, you can see them questioning whether or not their life is good or worth it or the decisions that they've made. I think especially for Ben's character to see where he is at the beginning and to be like, oh my gosh, this feels hopeless like, this feels awful Th this day in his life is not good <laughs> and knowing that that's where his life is and still seeing him go through ups and downs from that to have what's going on right then not uh, define his whole life when and when you're in it it feels like that's his life that's what it's going to be the whole time and really all of the characters feel like that when you're reading that moment you're like oh this is just like this is the end of the story almost for them you almost feel like it ends with like and so on or um you know joe's a music teacher and like that's what she was meant to do the whole time is be a music teacher she loves music so therefore once she's a music teacher like that's it for her but it's never it like none of these moments is ever it until it is i guess until the very end until they're they're no longer here. Uh, and I think that that's really the greater point. It's that like none of these moments is everything, you know, they're all just tiny little pieces that are a part of this much grander picture. And towards the end of the book, we get two different instances that are very similar and that I really loved. And actually I won't even say which characters they were about. I honestly feel like these characters are so many different things at different points in their lives that um, it, it's really hard to spoil, but I also don't want to take that experience away because I think that it is quite a magical one to see yourself, you know, thinking of a character in a specific way and just assuming that that's it, even once you've already kind of figured out that like that's never it. Um, and then later on being like, oh, that's right, they're still changing, like they're still growing, they're still becoming different people like throughout their lives or they're... They're still like on this this journey, I guess. So I don't want to take that away. And therefore I won't say exactly like which stories, like whose stories these quotes were in. So for one person, they're talking about 
um, how sad it is to have something uh, end. And the response that they get from the other person in the conversation is, everything ends doesn't mean it wasn't good. Which, very true, like just because something is over doesn't mean that it wasn't good while it was happening and doesn't mean that you can't reflect on it fondly. Uh, and then also in another area, it was um, someone says, none of it worked out, none of it went anywhere. And the other person in that conversation responds, that doesn't mean it wasn't any good. Uh, so I think that these happen maybe within like, at least within 50 pages, but I wanna say about like within 20 pages, because I think it's in the last sections of two different characters' parts of the book. Uh, and I like that in both situations, like characters were second guessing decisions that they made in their lives, or that maybe they did something wrong with an opportunity that they were given or a situation that they were in, but they're reminded by other people there that, you know, that doesn't mean that that it wasn't good. If that were the case, then something would have to go on forever in order for it to be considered good, but we know that that's not true. And that's not true for any of these people. I just, I feel like this book did such a good job of asking all of these questions. Specifically, you know, the main question is a life worth living if nothing amazing comes out of it. You know, if nothing ever comes of it, if, if nothing ever goes anywhere, that should still mean that it's good, right? Like, it's still worth it. And seeing these lives and seeing them not be these incredible, you know, amazing lives or that they didn't like interconnect with each other. Like it doesn't have to be that, right? Like a life can just be a life and it can, it can be both good and bad at different times, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth living. And I just feel like there are so many moments where Spufford just like pulls in these like quotes that make you think about this idea as a whole that has already been proposed in the first couple of pages so that you're allowed to to use these moments like when people have these quotes and think of it in that way and I oh, it's just so beautiful like it's such a beautiful book okay <laughs> I'm getting to that point where I'm talking about a book that I really like where I just stop talking and instead I sit here and think about it some more um, which isn't good content so I'm gonna jump right into my final thoughts <laughs> segment of this um, which I feel like you probably realized at this point that final thoughts loved it um, I, oh so good and I understand that some people did not really enjoy this book um, they found it boring or they were hoping for something different but I hope that through this review you understand why someone could love it as much as I've been, you know, rambling on about it. Oh, duh, and with that, um, it's time to bring the frog into it. So the Freshly Frog, the Booker mascot, if you will, um, <laughs> ribbits for books that I uh, would recommend the viewer to read. Uh, and so for this book, that's right. We've got our first double ribbit. So I've been doing this for this Booker season. I think I said in the first video where I introduced the Booker Frog in general uh, that maybe for certain remarkable books, I would give more than one ribbit. Um, and I'm happy to say that Light Perpetual is the first one in the double ribbit club, which is now a thing. Of course, some other books that I read in the past would probably be a part of it. And maybe that'll be its whole own video at one point. We can pad out the, the double ribbit club a little bit uh, but light perpetual i so so recommend reading this book i think that it's amazing writing it's amazing storytelling it does such a good job of crafting characters while also asking this grander question and i would even argue answering that question as well and it allows you as the reader to do so much thinking throughout the book like i really feel like it doesn't spoon feed you as the reader but it also gives you everything you need to to think critically about it, about the concepts, about the people's lives, so that it doesn't feel like one of those books where, you know, you kind of feel dumb while you're reading it and you're like, I know that there's something I'm supposed to be picking up from this, but it's just not happening. Like, I feel like it gives you more than that, but it also doesn't like spoon feed you the answer. 
um, or not the answer, but the ideas and or the thoughts along the way. And I'm sure that different people would have different thoughts about this than I would even. And actually, that's a great point. If you've read this book, um, please let me know what you think. So with that, uh, that's the end of this video. I hope that you did enjoy it. And if you did, please do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.